Hello, everyone. My guest today is John Oshel. He's the, he joined the small business CRM software provider SwiftPage back in July of 2012 and currently serves as the CEO. He came to SwiftPage with a 30-year track record of building highly profitable and sustainable revenue growth for emerging companies and established global leaders. John is an advocate for entrepreneurship and small business growth. John, are you ready to take us to the top? I'm ready, man. All right. Why do you like small business so much? Constant contact did not have such a good outcome. Oh, no. You know what? Small business is really, uh, really a cool place to be. They, they need so much help right now, the small business. And when I look at a small business, I say, you know what? They need four things in order to grow. We call them presence, traffic, conversion, retention, and optimization tools. And uh, as SwiftPage, we are playing in conversion and retention as this little tiny email marketing company, quite frankly. Uh, and we said, you know what? Let's let's go out and be the 800 pound gorilla and just own conversion and retention and and help these small businesses grow. So, so what's the, know, the, go, ahead. go ahead. No, I was going to say. I mean, you know, you know why people don't like small businesses because it's really really hard to get a, a critical mass of customers in small businesses, and it's really hard to do it in a profitable sense. So uh, we could talk lots about that. Well, and generally speaking, nine out of 10 businesses fail. So your churn is naturally a heck, you know, it's a hard thing to drive down. How have you kept your churn low and what is it today? Yeah, so right now we our churn is about 1.5%, a little under 1.5% on a monthly basis. So from a That's small logo business, churn, right? That's uh, that's logo churn. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and revenue churn is is about that, maybe even a little lower uh, yeah. from that standpoint. But anyway, um, you know how you how you really uh, keep your churn low is absolutely number one. You got to have a great product, right? And it's got to be and it's got to be uh, very very useful. And number two is you have got to focus on what we call the customer experience management. If you don't focus on that as a, as a small business software provider, your your customers will just run away from you as fast as they possibly can. So how do you do that at scale? I imagine most of this, maybe you start off with doing a human to figure it out, but eventually you have to code it so it becomes no touch. Yeah, so uh, let me give you, uh, give me a half a second to take it back and then I'll take you forward if that's that. okay. Uh, so, you know, we, we were this little tiny uh, email, uh, uh, pr email marketing provider back in 2012. And I make this funny story that uh, I was in a board, uh, board meeting and I went to the restroom and I came back out. And uh, next thing you know, they had named me as uh, the CEO of the company because I was just a board member at the How time. How old was it at that point? When did the actual company launch? Companies was found that was founded in 2001, so it had oh, been wow. around quite quite a long time, and it had done like most small business, most uh, you know startup software companies, got to four million in revenue, and then couldn't get past it, right? And it was just like stagnated at four million for like four years. Uh, and as a board, we said, hey, we got to do something completely different, and that's kind of when I stepped in. Uh, my background is I do a lot of acquisitions. I grow companies pretty quickly that way. So we very rapidly bought two companies. We bought the ACT product and we bought Sales Logix from Sage uh, over in the UK. Um, when we when we bought the company, uh, it was it, it was well. Come it, on, it, hold on, John. Don't skip over that. How did you fund those things? Oh boy, that that one is. Uh, I'm going to write a book about that, Nathan. I mean, just, this was huge. So we're just a little four and a half million dollar company, and we bought like seventy million dollars worth of revenue. That's why I uh, ask. Uh, so it was kind of crazy. So. A lot of help from uh, a couple of institutionals. Excel KKR helped us out. Uh, Jump Capital helped us out, and Silicon Valley Bank. Uh, we went and raised uh, raised the money. It was a lot of them believing in us uh, and where we could take this thing. Uh, and uh, they really looked at us as probably the only one that could take Act, uh, which is a 30 year old uh, software company, uh, and turn it back around. Yeah. Uh, and so you know that that's how that's how we funded it. Um, and uh, you know we started out. It was a distressed asset when we picked picked it up. Uh, it was a closed desktop system. Uh, when when you say that, it, what are you referencing? ACT? ACT, the yeah. product, right? So uh, it, it, ACT was actually founded in, and launched in 1987. Uh, so it's, it's been around a long time. It was like the father of CRM, you know, et cetera. Uh, but it had gotten to a point where it uh, Sage owned it for a number of years and they really hadn't kept up with the times. It was, like I said, a closed desktop system. Nobody wanted to buy desktop software. Really wasn't, uh, you know, uh, focusing on customers, et cetera. Long story short, we went through this big transformation era. Uh, and at that point, I was six foot five and had a full head of hair. And uh, we kind of <laughs> worked our way through that. We launched uh, an open cloud-enabled platform. So a relaunch of ACT in, in uh, May of 2015. 
uh, and then, you know, really started focusing on conversion, what we call the conversion era, converting. We had, uh, at that point, we had 65,000 customers uh, on, around the world. In 2012? In, in uh, 2015. Okay. Uh, we now have over 85,000 customers, over 300,000 users, all on our, uh, you know, cloud and open cloud enabled platform, uh, paying subscription, uh, you know, et cetera. So we really transformed the, uh, the business over the last uh, three years. So how do you keep churn down? Great product, focus on that, and then really focus on getting your customers to use it. We're a CRM product. And so the biggest issue that uh, CRM uh, software providers have is adoption. If you don't get people to use your software and they're paying a subscription, guess what? They're not going to renew. They're just going to say, hey, I'm going to. So how do you get people up and on this thing? We launched what we call a concierge service. We, and the tagline is give us 20 minutes of your time and we'll show you how to grow your business 30 um, percent. And in that way, you get people is that up free and or money. paid. Uh, that's free, actually. So it's part of the subscription. Everybody that subscribes, you get a 20-minute uh, concierge uh, call that basically allows uh, allows us to that's get That's a real you. phone call. Real phone call. Somebody on the phone talking to you. All right, John, what? you're 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 like Walt Disney here. There's magic happening here somewhere. What's your? I'm going to figure it out. What's your team size today? Uh, we got a little a uh, little over 170 people in three locations around the world. Uh, when, where's the? What's the prime one? Uh, so our uh, two, we have two uh, big operation centers, one in Scottsdale, Arizona, and the other over in Newcastle, UK. And then our corporate headquarters is here in Denver. Okay, so 170 team members. How many of them are dedicated to that onboarding, those calls? Um, whew, well, we probably have close to uh, 80, 80 some people that that uh, that support the customer experience. Okay, and what is the average customer paying per month? What's the ARPU? Our poo right now per month per customer is about a little under $150 a month. My gosh. So how many of these 20 minute onboarding calls are these 70 people on your team doing per day to make that actually scale at such a low price point profitably? Yeah, so that, that's the, that's the challenge on this is that not everybody takes advantage of, uh, of that. So and ah. if you also take a look at, you know, our 80,000 customers, so here's the Walt Disney, here's the magic, here it comes, ready? Uh, of the 80,000, when you convert people over, they don't need a 20 minute, the 20 minute con concierge call. So now you're really looking at anybody that's net new coming on. So we've got about 20,000 net new customers that, that have come on board uh, over the last year. So now you're, or our last few years. So now you're talking about not, not uh, you know, that many calls uh, uh, per month. Now, the other thing is, is that you got the concierge call. The other thing is when you talk about uh, customer experience management, it's not about, hey, you, you subscribe. Great. Good luck to you. I'll talk to you when your renewal comes in. It's all about how do you stay in touch with that customer all the way through the life cycle of, of the year, if you would. So it's your concierge. You're up and running. You know, every month, what can I do for you? We have all different kinds of uh, webinars. We have all different kinds of free content that we give subscribers. We call it being part of the Act Insiders Club. Uh, but you're constantly in in, um, in contact and understanding where where the customers are. And, and if you start seeing people that need help, then you can do a quick outbound call to those and say, hey, guys, you're, we see that you haven't been using the software. Is there anything I can do for you? What, what do you need? You know, et cetera. That's how you keep churn down. I want to talk more about your insiders club here in a second, but in terms of general size today, 85,000 customers at 150 bucks a month, you guys are doing almost 13 million bucks a month in revenue or right around there. Is that right? Yeah, just a little bit, a little bit, uh, a little bit off, but uh, not, not too far. Okay. That's good to know. You guys are past hundred million bucks in AR at this point. Uh, no, a little under, uh, we're under that. Will you break it this year? You think? Uh, no, we won't. Come on, John. I'm trying. More, more of your magic, more of your magic. Trying, All right. Bro. Try it. All right, I feel you. Um, before I talk more about your Insiders Club and specifically what activation metrics you like to focus on that you know drive churn down, I'm sure there's probably a few things you know you have to get people to do. Um, for people listening right now that have similar experience to you, they have people that have said, we'll give you money if you find a good company to buy, and they just don't know how to structure it. Now, you do this at a huge scale because you brought in a crap ton of capital behind you. How did that, how was that actually structured? Structured. I imagine you own what 10, 15, something like that percent. The investors own the rest, and you're a hired gun essentially. I mean, how's it work? Just the opposite, right? So really? Again, why we're going to run, write a book. So it was 62% of the company is owned by the common shareholders. 
uh, of which I'm 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 part of that. I'm also part of the of preferred too. But uh, our founders, uh, etc. So we were able to do all those acquisitions and only give up, uh, you know, less than uh, less than thirty eight percent of the company. How much just for the seventy? Because I mean, you essentially bought a seventy million dollar revenue stream, correct? Yeah, two companies. Two, two companies, companies together, seventy million. I mean, did, did you? I mean, did you get them for less than one x ARR? Oh yeah, we got them for a steal, right? We absolutely. Can you tell did. me? No, I can't tell you. Come on, was, John, uh, you're Sage, killing me. Sage, Sage was a publicly traded company, and I promised I, I wouldn't allow they, that to do that. But they didn't listen, disclose that in the public call. Uh, they didn't because they bundled three three uh, acquisitions together, and they and they said exactly what it was. Because you, you know, got such a steal, they couldn't tell everyone how big of a steal they gave you, huh? They couldn't. And, and listen, I came from publicly traded company backgrounds too, so I knew exactly the game they were playing. But I will tell you that. Um, yeah, I mean, we've got, we got two companies, uh, basically, you know, they, they were distressed assets. So it was really easy to, uh, to, to, to pick them up. Um, now I will tell you that we divested off sales logics to Infor in 2014. Uh, so about a year after we, we acquired them and I was able to divest Infor or sales logics off for one and a half times what I paid for both, uh, the companies, uh, when I bought them together. So it was uh, it was a lot of fun, it's John. Of- you're, I want to dive more here. I mean, the, 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 you, what you've done is you've gotten so creative with capital. This is this is the, the in essence doing something with nothing. I mean, you basically kept more than fifty percent of the company for common shareholders, funded seventy million bucks in new ARR for with other people's money, and then flipped around and made that money back a year and a half later by selling whatever half or a third of that AR you acquired, you know, a year earlier. I mean, that's basically what happened. Accurate. That's accurate. That's accurate. You, you, you said it very well. Interesting. Okay. Self-funded after kind of the M&A money or have you raised capital since then? Have not. Uh, we Our jump capital has put uh, another uh, couple of rounds in just because they wanted to con- continue to, to help fund our growth. Um, and, you know, a lot of what we had to do is really fund the transformation of ACT and then fund the conversion. So one of the things you need to realize, uh, everybody does, is as, they, as you go through a license and maintenance company and you convert it over to, uh, you know, SaaS and, and subscription, you need an, an enormous amount of cash on your balance sheet uh, and your revenue looks like it's going down. Why? Because you can only uh, recognize one twelfth of the subscription uh, if it's an annual subscription, et cetera. So all of a sudden your investors are looking at you and they're saying, John, you said this was going to create a whole lot of value. And I, and I was like, yes, guys, it, it will. But we have to go through the ugliness uh, of getting through that transformation. And when I say ugly, oh man, it gets ugly. I mean, you're talking like throw up from your baby ugly. Uh, you Describe know, the throw up. How bad was it? Well, your, 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 uh, your revenue looks like it's dropping dramatically. You're, you're investing like crazy. So your bottom line goes negative uh, and all, and you're basically telling them, and I was able to actually pinpoint it and say, listen, in around the second quarter of 2016, we're going to come through the window and everything will be fine. Did you? Now, and we did. Yeah, we actually did. Uh, and I was I was only off by maybe a month or two. So it wasn't too bad. Uh, but I'll tell you, you know, when it got really rough, Nathan, it was like 15, the, the sec, or third and fourth quarter of 2015, because that's that was the bottom. Why? Uh, In terms and, of like monthly burn cash? What, what do you mean bottom? Yeah, I mean, you, you just look at your financials, right? So, you know, from year over year, your revenue looked like it went down seven million. Um, you know, your your EBITDA was, you know, negative with lots of zeros on the end of it. Uh, and everybody's saying, are you sure we're going to come back out? And I was like, I swear to God, we're going to come back out. Right. And so, you know, you know, you, you just have to spend. So a lot of my time at that point was making sure investors felt comfortable. The board felt comfortable. But then also we call ourselves Swifties. But we're all part of Swift page. Uh, you know, so you got to make sure all the Swifties, you know, can see all this, too, because they're looking at this and saying, John, you know, you said we we're going to take this hill. And are we really going to take it? And they're like, you know, we're there. We're there, guys. You know, just just hang in there. So, so you know, we came to it. But I, I'll tell you, you know, 16, we came back through. 17 was a great year. How much Eight, did you grow from 16 to 17? 16 to 17, we grew up on the top line about 23%, uh, EBITDA off the charts because we went from negative to, you know, positive, well positive EBITDA. So yep. hundreds of percentiles, is, uh, you know, type of thing. So that's good. Uh, but, I mean, so if you're just south today of call, you know, call it 90 or 80 ish million in that range, I mean, you were what for, you know, 50, 60 million at the end of 2016 and have since scaled since from there, huh? It scales, yeah. So now it's about moving into what we call the growth era, uh, and that's really about going out. and We're actually looking to raise some capital as well. How so much? 
find the well i'm going to keep that one private for for, for a little bit uh but uh we're, we're what we're going to try and fund is is acquisitions um we have geographic ex- more geographic expansion and acquisitions those are the two things that uh we'd like to uh, to get some capital and go after in a big way describe the perfect acquisition size for you five million 20 million 100 million dollar acquisitions what's the size yeah. I think there's there's three buckets that we look at in acquisitions. I look at it as um, two of them are, are what I call uh, adjacencies to our CRM. Then one is marketing automation and the other is uh, sales automation. Yep. And then the third is uh, a vertical expansion. We have a couple of verticals that we're pretty deep in, wealth management, real estate, and HVAC. Um, and so, you know, a, a, if, if I look at a, a vertical expansion, you're probably looking at anywhere from a 25 to $50 million acquisition. If you're looking at marketing automation, sales automation, it could be anywhere from like a $3 million to a $25 million. And are you uh, looking for distressed assets or high growth companies? No. I, well, there's, again, I'll go back to three buckets. We're looking for either technology acquisitions. They could have, you know, great technology, no customers, but they're trying to figure out how to sell it. And, you know, you can kind of pick those up uh, relatively cheap because then they can come along for the ride. Um, ARPU drivers, uh, somebody that has, uh, you know, good technology customers, uh, and, uh, you know, are looking to, um, uh, you know, another way, another channel to, to sell their software. Uh, and then when you look at the verticals, you know, that's really about, you know, something big and transformational, uh, if you would. Now a vertical, it could, that could be a distressed asset. I mean, it could be somebody that has got a really uh, deep knowledge of the vertical, a really good so, uh, following, but maybe their technology isn't really uh, where it needs to be, you know, et cetera. So, um, so yeah, that, I mean, that's, that, that's the fun part now is to try and figure out, you know, how to make all that happen. I'm taking notes cause I've got, I mean, right now I have about 20 CEOs I'm working with that are looking to sell their companies at very rational prices. I think they potentially fit your model. I'll follow up with you obviously after this about that, but I, I, I like how you're thinking about acquisition in terms, I mean, customer growth in terms of just buying full companies. Now, when you get growth that is not from an acquisition, what are you paying to acquire customers on average fully weighted? You know, our, our CAC, um, we kind of look at our CAC in two different ways. We look at it, how much does it cost us to get a net new? How much does it cost us to get a, uh, uh, a what we call a conversion? Somebody that's in our install base that we're converting uh, up there. So a net new is costing us per unit, um, probably in that 140 to $160 range. And a unit is a seat or a business a logo? Seat. Okay. It's a seat. Yeah. So, and we, we uh, so, you know, uh, the payback is less about six, five to six months uh, on a, on a net new. Now a, an install base or a conversion, you know, we're, we're just under a hundred bucks to uh, uh, from a CAC perspective. And then you can break it down even further. You know, can break it down direct versus channel. Cause we have a very large channel. We didn't, we didn't chat about that. We call them ACCs or act certified consultants. Um, there's about 250 of those, uh, wow. uh, around the world. Uh, and they're, uh, they represent about 50% of our revenue right now. So it's a very, very strong channel for us. What's the, uh, what's the percentage payout to those guys when they bring in customers, 30%, 50% or something else? Uh, there's, there's tiers and they go from diamond all the way down to silver. Uh, and at the, the top, you could get as much as a 40% uh, commission, uh, all the way down to, you know, 10% if you're silver. That's interesting. So that's actually a huge opportunity in terms of capital efficiency for you, because if you've got that much, that's essentially a cost of goods sold paying those guys. And it makes a 50% of your revenue. If you figure out a way where you can buy them out for the next 12 months revenue, go raise that capital, you immediately increase top line pretty significantly. There you go. That's interesting. <laughs> Would you ever do that? No, I think, you know what, right now our channel is, uh, is a really, really, really good uh, part of our business. Uh, when we've spent a lot of time over the last three or four years to, to really turn the relationship with the channel. When we acquired uh, the ACK brand, uh, we acquired the channel with us and it had a very, very bad relationship with Sage. So we spent a, a lot of time turning that around and they've really, really uh, come, come through for us. So it's a really good part of our business. Will you IPO in 2018 or 2019 to help fund these acquisitions if you don't go the traditional fundraising route? I don't think so. You know, I've, I've taken two companies public, uh, been there, done that, rang the bell on New York Stock Exchange. Uh, you know, there, there's only a, there's 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 really two reasons why you need to go, want to go public. One is you need liquidity and we don't need liquidity right now. And number two is currency. Right. Do you need currency for acquisitions? I actually think that we'll go and, and we'll find uh, a capital partner. Uh, and then start uh, going down the, that path and really get into the hyper growth mode. And then we'll make a decision, you know, probably a little bit later on is, you know, how do we how do we get some liquidity after that? Would you value yourself to, as you are today more or less than 700 million? 
Oh, less. Yeah. No, we're less, we're less than 700 million. And why do you say that so confidently? You know, I think that, uh, when, when people look at us from a valuation standpoint, they, they, they say, you know, hey, we've, you've done fantastic. For, you've got you've taken this great conversion uh, and, and converted a very large base uh, over to to subscription. You've shown that you can grow net new. They want to see net new grow faster. Uh, and I think that's probably holding down our value right now. Interesting. Interesting. And then last two economics here before we wrap up with the famous five uh, lifetime value in terms of months. Do you calculate that just one divided by churn and get about 60, 70 months? Yeah, we do. And it's, it's right around that. It's uh, 6.1 years. So uh, it's is, is where our lifetime value is. Got and it. Yeah. And then you're just multiplying that by $100 ARPU to get about six, seven grand in LTV. Yep. Exactly. Interesting. Interesting. Your payback is fairly rapid if you're paying a hundred bucks, right? For a conversion and they're paying a hundred bucks a month. Have you ever d- thought about getting more aggressive with CAC or no? Um, you know, that, that is what we're looking at as we enter into growth era right now, we, we have this phenomenal machine, um, and it, it's just a funnel, right? So at the top of the funnel, how many leads come in, what does it, those leads, we call those raw leads and, and then they get converted over to sales accepted leads. We've got about a, an 82% conversion from raw leads to sales acceptance leads. We then have about a 60% uh, uh, conversion from sales accepted leads to opportunities. And we close in the in the low 50s uh, as well. So we have a really good machine. Now it's, you start looking, if you take a look at our CAC and you take a look at our payback and you look at our CAC uh, over CLV, it's about 11. Um, and you start saying to yourself, man, maybe I should just pump more into the top of the funnel and just grow like crazy. So that's, that's kind of one of the things that we're looking at right now. Interesting. Last question. Do you use conference sponsorships as a means to drive growth or no? We don't actually, um, we, we don't do that. We do, we do hold an annual conference ourselves for all of our ACCs. Uh, and it's usually in the, uh, late October, early November timeframe down in, uh, in Scottsdale. And we get, Probably about 50% of our ACCs will make the trek from around the world to, to come in. And that's, that's think of it, they're almost like our, our uh, an external sales force or like one of our own. So that's kind of getting them together, getting uh, to get them up to speed on what, you know, how we did in the year, what's coming up in the next year, getting them all fired up, getting handing out awards and, and that kind of stuff. And, uh, and it's a really good, a really good time. All right, John, take us home here. Number one, famous five. What's your favorite business book? Oh, Blink uh, from uh, uh, Malcolm uh, Gladwell. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? You know, there is a CEO that I follow. He is a mentor of mine. Uh, I worked for him for a number of years. His name is Jerry Stead. Uh, he was the uh, CEO uh, from for me at, at IHS, where we took that company from 200 million to uh, well over 2 billion and then sold it for 13 billion. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, he's he's one that I keep in touch with and follow all the time. Number three, besides your own, what's your favorite online tool? Oh, for me, oh my gosh, my online tool is probably one that I communicate with uh, lots of folks. I'm a I'm a huge Twitter guy and a huge uh, LinkedIn guy, uh, so um, I try and I try and get out there as much as I possibly can. Number four, John, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Ooh, I get uh, six and a half hours. I'm pretty religious about that because I, I go, I get up early. I'm up at five and I, and I'm a, a huge workout guy. So I got to go to bed pretty early to, to make sure I get six. And what's your situation? Married, single, you have kiddos? I am married to lovely, a lovely woman, Linda. And I have four kids and three grandkids. Wow. Okay. Now if Benioff offered you 600 million Actually, let's not do Benioff. I'm going to go with HubSpot because their ARPUs are lower than Salesforce. Maybe Brian's more, more, uh, more a better fit. If he offered you five or six hundred million bucks to sell the company, and you say no, does Linda kill you over dinner tonight? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. She'd say, take the money and run like a stump, brother. <laughs> All right. Last question here, John. How old are you today? And then tell us what you wish your 20 year old self knew. So, how old am I today? Yep. Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a speed limit right now. I'm 55. All right. So uh, what I would know it, it, it when 20 years ago, when I was 20, you know, I, when I was that, I was just getting into computer. I was I'm an old uh, computer guy, way from way back. So I used to sleep on computer room floors and you know program and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I would tell myself is uh, you know go raise some capital and start a business early. 
There you guys have it from John. Raise some capital. Start a business earlier on. I'd say he's doing it the right way. It's company Swift Pays was launched in 2001. He came in in 2012. He was on the board after four years of stagnant growth, around $4 million bucks in ARR, and really did something special. Raised a bunch of capital to go make acquisitions of two companies, which generated $70 million bucks in ARR. Uh, he then, a year later, sold basically a portion of that back at the total price he paid a year earlier. So he got that capital back very efficiently. Now the company is scaling. They're growing about 20% year over year in terms of revenue growth from 2016 to 2017. Today, flirting with the 90 million-ish range, hopefully breaking 100 million here before long. He's now has an appetite for raising capital, potentially going out and acquiring additional companies in specific sectors, as well as industries like, like HVAC. His team of 170 people focused on onboarding and fighting for these small business owners paying 100 bucks a month. There's 85,000 of them right now. John, thank you for taking us to the the top.